During the tumultuous backdrop of Japan's fight for survival in the throes of World War II, a truly extraordinary endeavor took shape. The Kawanishi KX-3, a monumental aircraft conceived with the audacious goal of rescuing the nation from its ever-mounting trials. In the face of continuous setbacks in the Pacific theater, engineers took on a daring mission to develop an extraordinary flying machine that would surpass anything the world had witnessed before. What were the remarkable features and innovations that were integrated into this extraordinary aircraft? Let's move on a captivating journey as we explore the remarkable story of the KX-3, an aircraft that defied all expectations and left an indelible mark on history. In 1943, the Japanese Empire's fortunes in its various holdings in the Asia-Pacific region were taking a turn for the worse. With each passing battle, the carrier force suffered defeat after defeat, while the once formidable submarines found themselves on the receiving end of relentless pursuit. In the Pacific, the country's merchant fleet faced relentless attacks from Allied forces, which hindered the replenishment of supplies and manpower between islands. One can only imagine the sheer marvel of engineering that such a plane would be. It would likely include state-of-the-art technology designed to achieve its goal of saving Japan, whether that is through exceptional performance, advanced defensive capabilities, or other groundbreaking features. In the realm of modern warfare, it is crucial to prioritize evading detection. With this in mind, it is highly probable that the KX-3 would incorporate cutting-edge stealth capabilities. These may encompass the use of radar absorbent materials optimizing its shape to minimize radar cross-section, and potentially even implementing active measures, such as radar jamming. The KX-3 would showcase remarkable speed and agility, enabling it to outpace and outmaneuver any potential adversaries. Utilizing cutting-edge jet propulsion systems and sleek aerodynamic designs, this incredible machine is capable of reaching mind-boggling Mach speeds and executing precise maneuvers with ease. The range of an aircraft designed for defense or rescue missions is a crucial factor to consider. The KX-3 is expected to come with engines that prioritize fuel efficiency and spacious fuel tanks, along for long-range flights without the need for refueling. This ensures that the aircraft can easily reach far-off destinations or remain in the air for extended periods, which is particularly useful during search and rescue missions. For any mission, be it aerial combat, reconnaissance, or humanitarian efforts, the KX-3 would require a payload capacity that is adaptable and flexible. Perhaps it could showcase modular weapon mounts or sensor packages that can be effortlessly interchanged to suit the specific demands of each mission. The KX-3 cockpit would probably come equipped with state-of-the-art avionics systems, featuring multi-function displays, advanced navigation aids, and cutting-edge sensor suites to enhance situational awareness and target acquisition. In order to lessen the burden on pilots and provide more flexibility in operations, the KX-3 could potentially include autonomous flight capabilities. This would enable the aircraft to perform specific tasks, such as planning routes or executing defensive maneuvers, without the need for direct human intervention. To ensure its survival in contested airspace, the KX-3 would require a set of powerful defensive systems. These would include missile warning sensors, countermeasures dispensers, and potentially even directed energy weapons for point defense against any incoming threats. In the event of a crisis, the KX-3 would be well prepared to assist Japan with its specialized rescue and recovery equipment. This includes hoists, medical facilities, and even deployable life rafts for maritime operations. The KX-3 has been designed with a modular design architecture, enabling seamless upgrades and modifications throughout its service life to effectively address changing threats and operational needs. As the Empire grappled with this complex logistical challenge, authorities scrambled to find solutions, even considering unconventional ideas, in order to prevent the total defeat of their forces overseas. At this point in history, the Kawanishi Aircraft Company had already solidified its position as the leading manufacturer of maritime airplanes for the Imperial Japanese Navy. Their esteemed lineup included the H-6K Mavis and H-8K Emily. In 1943, the IJN authorities set their sights on creating a colossal 500-ton multi-engine flying boat. This impressive aircraft was designed to transport large amounts of cargo over long distances to various land bases in the region. Given the scale of this endeavor, logistics played a crucial role in the development of this ambitious project. 
which was given the designation KX-3. Up until this stage of the war, there was no comparable aircraft that Kawanishi engineers could draw inspiration from. Therefore, the task at hand was quite significant, as it was filled with numerous design and technical obstacles at every step. One of the major challenges was figuring out how to get this massive and impressive airplane to take off using its own power. Only a single flyable example of the Blomen Voss BV-238 was ever achieved by the Germans, while the American Hughes H-4 Spruce Goose could hardly be deemed a triumph given its brief time in the air. However, the task was presented to the employees, and a team was assembled to devise blueprints for the upcoming device. In order to streamline the development process, the company utilized their own well-established HHK flying boat as a foundation, enlarging its dimensions to meet the specific requirements of the IJN. The design incorporated a hull resembling that of a boat, allowing for takeoffs and landings on water. Additionally, a broad wing main plane was implemented, which was crucial for generating the necessary lift and drag. The main planes were positioned on top of the fuselage spine, while collapsible outboard sponsons provided support for the large wings at the halfway points. Additional lift and drag can be achieved by attaching long-running flaps to the trailing edges of both wing members. The fuselage was designed with flat sides and a curved top surface. The hull extended from the boat assembly to the midpoint of the empennage. At the back of the aircraft, you'll find a set of tall vertical fins that provide control, with separate horizontal planes located at the very end of the fuselage to support them. When it comes to the aircraft's measurements, they were quite impressive. On paper, the dimensions boasted a length of 531 feet, a wingspan of 590 feet, and a towering height of 116 feet. There was nothing that could come close to meeting these specifications. One of the main considerations, apart from the immense dimensions of the aircraft being proposed, revolved around the amount of power it would need to take flight. The outcome was a configuration that included a total of 12 Rikugan Kogogijutsu Kengi Uju Ne 201 turboprop engines. These powerful engines, estimated to produce 1,870 horsepower each, were arranged in a manner where each unit drove multi-blade propeller units in a puller fashion. Adding to this would be four to six Mitsubishi Ne 330 turbojet engines, with the technology provided by Germany's BMW. The streamlined nacelles would house the jet engines, positioned outboard of the final turboprop on each wing main plane. Overall, the goal was to have a power plant mix that would provide the flying boat with sufficient power for takeoff and cruising with a heavy load. Amidst the cutting-edge aeronautical features of the aircraft, there were also more traditional concerns to address, like self-defense. In order to protect the slow, cumbersome aircraft from enemy fighters, the KX-3 would probably adopt a similar approach to existing Kawanishi flying boats when it comes to armament, a combination of automatic cannons and machine guns. Although the defensive suite was never finalized, one can speculate that the nose and tail might have been equipped with a 20mm automatic cannon. Additionally, numerous dorsal turrets could have been installed along the extensive length of the dorsal fuselage spine, potentially housing pairs of 13mm air-cooled heavy machine guns there would have been corresponding armament fittings on each side of the fuselage. In any case, the progress in developing the anticipated turboprop engines was agonizingly slow and filled with technological challenges. The sluggish advancement of the Japanese turbojet only added to the difficulties. When considering the significant resources needed to build the enormous fuselage and wings of the flying boat, along with the worsening Japanese war situation, it becomes clear that the KX-3 was destined for failure the program came to a halt with minimal progress made, and the war itself came to an end in August of 1945, putting an end to any hopes for the Kawanishi flying boat project. The KX-3 had the potential to become the largest aircraft ever constructed, surpassing any other in the world, had it been finished and successfully taken flight. Instead, it became known as yet another of the unrealized secret weapons of World War II.